My name is Joanne Fullerton. I've been based in Edinburgh for a long time. I've got a real passion for food systems and um, community activism and helping people gain autonomy over their health through food. I first got involved with the Veg Advocate Programme through my involvement with Nourish Scotland. Peace Blue Project is incredibly successful, it's been fantastic. On one side we have our work with the pledges, but what we're here to talk about really is about the Veg Advocate Programme. And we knew across the nations we had to build up a, an army of, of food activists who were looking in their communities at how to remove the barriers to accessing veg and eating, increasing the accessibility to veg, just where they are and how we can link those people together and learn from each other across the nations. How do we know what needs to happen at a, on the ground in a community level? So working across the nations in each individual communities, our veg advocates could come up with their own solutions about how that would work best for them. And this is how we had the Veg Advocate Grant Programme because we've worked with them for a number of years now and it was really to give them an opportunity to really think, what do I need to do? What, what difference can I make in my community? And to build that project and help them to get started for something that will, that will last a long time far beyond the project of Peace Please. We were given 200 pounds each um, as a veg advocate to make our projects happen. When I decided to do mushrooms for my veg advocate project, I got in touch with an organisation called Rise Mushrooms in Edinburgh. We're a community mushroom farm. We're based uh, in Fountain Bridge, Edinburgh. Our project is sort of more of a sort of addressing circular economy project. So we grow our mushrooms on, uh, try to grow our mushrooms on waste streams. So things like uh, spent coffee grounds from coffee shops, uh, sawdust as well from uh, carpenters, uh, coffee chaff. So sort of the byproducts that would otherwise grow in landfills. And we grow our mushrooms in a 40 foot shipping container. We've done a series of workshops here. We first came and we did a um, straw bale inoculation and a log inoculation. Um, and so, and this is sort of for outdoor cultivation. The place I come from, Poland, uh, mushrooms are part of our culture. Uh, I've been picking up wild mushrooms since I was a little girl, four years, five years old. And always, most of my diet, there were mushrooms. Coming here, we were always foraging for mushrooms, but there was luck in the shops to buy the mushrooms we like to eat. We started growing them, and we started with oysters many years ago. And that's how we are here. Mushrooms own us now. <laughs> Every mushroom, you have to become friends with them. They are living beings, and you have to listen. The only learning how to grow mushrooms is to listen what they want. So we have golden oysters, one type of oyster that likes hot climate, full sunlight, and they grow very well with over 21 degrees. 25 is okay for them. They grow very fast, but they are not often seen in the shops because they are the most fragile mushrooms you can ever get a tasty, beautiful, fruity flavor. Next, we have pink oysters. Those, again, are exotic species. They don't grow in UK, native, and they like hot temperatures. This is not for food, can't be eaten. It's quite tough, like a wood. But in Chinese medicine, uh, it's been used for thousands of years as a powder, uh, as a tea for people to support immune system and has a name in China as the mushroom of immortality. For a log inoculation, you want to drill holes in the log about a fist, fist length apart. And then you take one of these mycelated plugs and you bash it in and then you cover it with wax and that keeps like the birds and the bugs away so they won't get eaten by birds. The, you know, the little pl plugs won't get pecked at by birds. It takes about six months to a year. So what happens is the mycelium from the plug will then begin to spread across the log. They call it colonization, but we've tried to move away from that term for obvious reasons, and so we call it myceliate or myceliation. Um, and it will you know, spread throughout the log. And what, it, what mycelium does, like the mushrooms that we eat, they're 
decomposers. So it's decomposing the log. The log is like the food, they're primary decomposers. So once it sort of runs out of food, or you know, is fully sort of taken over and like eaten as much of the log as it can, um, it will, that takes about six months to a year. And then oftentimes what it needs is a kind of shock uh, to start producing fruit, start producing the mushrooms. So people will sometimes drop it in a river or electrocute it like with a cattle prod. Um, or, you know, if you leave it long enough that then they'll fruit, but you know, just kind of giving it an artificial shock will, will speed it up. Because fungi is such an integral part of our ecosystems, they're so important to our health and they play such a vital role in helping plants grow and they're the connective tissues of our ecosystems and it's our relationship to ecosystems that mirrors our relationship to food and our relationship to health. We're understanding that looking after ourselves is key because that is where you get the nutrition from. We, we never somehow link the vegetables with the what's in the soil. But if we don't put the nutrition back into the soil, then we're not getting it in our vegetables. All our food comes from soil. Even meat comes from soil. So without healthy soil, we don't have any healthy food. The Peace Police Project has been hugely successful. We recruited more volunteers than we ever thought we would. For me, the Veg Advocate Program really helped me gain the confidence to know that I can do this work to really bring about actual change. Up here in Scotland, we're going to be working with our volunteers from the Peace Police Project, along with all the other community advisors that we work with, right across all the work that we do. The Veg Advocate Programme was the difference between things happening and not happening. Mm -hmm.